our first reptile into the warehouse. We were contacted by a very thoughtful and generous person named Teresa in the cities in Minnesota and she had I think an iguana in a really big cage. The iguana has since passed away, she doesn't need the cage anymore and she asked if we could use it and we're like well Mara, our expo coordinator and program scheduler, has been looking kind of lonely working by herself at the warehouse so you know what let's give her a friend. So we are going to go pick up this big cage, somehow fit it in a rental truck and somehow get it into the warehouse and maybe figure out a way to put it together. So wish us luck. First thing we need to do though is get a rental truck I guess. Update, we have a rental truck yeah. and we bought moving blankets and things like straps to hopefully make this whole process work without breaking anything. See, it's a lot of glass. It is a lot of glass. in pieces in the back of the rental truck update it's not glass it's acrylic based so I am not worried at all anymore nothing's gonna crack and break it is acrylic so we are good to go what an incredibly nice couple they were too Teresa and her husband whose name I can't remember because he wasn't in the emails um, but thank you so much for thinking of us they were so nice and he was a retired vet too which is kind of cool so bunch of neat connections we got to meet a really nice couple and now we're gonna bring this cage back to the warehouse and start setting it up Check this out, they even kept the instructions on how to build this guy from 20 years ago when they first bought it. This is crazy, even the like catalog for it. Awesome. Okay, this is really gonna help. They also like disassembled everything for us and labeled all of the parts. So that is going to help us so much to make this all go smoothly. All right, we got it put together. Anything that we could have put on backwards, we did. So we took it apart about every step of the way to redo it. But you know what? It's done. And now we're putting the ledges in, which are awesome foam-based ledges. We have one more we're gonna put at an angle there to kind of look, make it look a little bit more natural. And then we're gonna hook up all the lights. And Ed would like us to point out that he is hand drilling the new hole for the ledge because the space between those, which I think this panel we put in maybe upside down. That yeah. could be why the distance is off. But Ed is just drilling a new hole with his hand to make it work. It'll be fine. All right, cage is in place in our warehouse lobby area. Initial thoughts on this cage. We Super. Uh, not sturdy. <laughs> yeah, it's here. You should like you should like push it. It's, yeah Yeah, it's a little bit flimsy, isn't it? <laughs> but I mean it's a 20 year old cage So they've probably fixed that design by I now. Would, I would hope. Yeah Another thing we are a little concerned about is the doors here since it is a flimsier design If we were to put a snake in here they could bend that open. So, I mean, there is a lock or a spot for a lock. Unfortunately, the locks that this cage comes with doesn't do anything to like pinch it together. So we're gonna buy the same locks we use for Adoption Island, which actually do kind of pinch them there, at least hold them and prevent them from being widened by an animal and then an animal escaping from them. Yeah, so we're gonna still, do that. I mean, the gap here is quite large. Yeah. Oh, and geez. Even, even if you put a lock mm. here, you know, you can still a little bit. Flex out a little, you know. So we're gonna have to play around with that and that might actually determine or help us narrow down what might species. Might be a lizard that has to go in here. Might have to be a lizard. Yeah, you're right. Maybe not snakes. Hmm. We were thinking maybe Baron's racers could go in there, but we have to put 
big adults in there and right each away. Each door has a hole that's yep. baby size. Little holes, so exactly. We can't put young ones in there. They're just going to escape. But we could maybe do adult Baron's racers. You could do like an emerald tree boa in yeah, there. That'd be that kind of cool. That would work. Yeah. Then, you just have to make it more arboreal. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Um, then maybe the bottom part could be used for like a box turtle. With how big this enclosure is, we could do some sort of combo as long as we strategically pick the species. Mm -hmm. Like one isn't going to be a prey item for another. Oh, what if we released, I'm going to just forget about all the holes. What if we released 100 anoles in here I mean, and then put in three vine snakes? All we have to do is cover up these holes and we're good to go. We can do that plan. Oh. Okay, because then we just have to feed the anoles, and it's a self-sustaining yeah. ecosystem. Because the, the crickets feed the anoles. Yep. The anoles have babies. The babies grow up and feed the vine snakes. Exactly. And the vine snakes just prosper. Yeah, perfect. Unless they would get really bad. Yeah, I don't know if they would eat Lizards them all or not. Lizards are lean. Lizards are lean. Yeah. Can't, all right, so I think what we're going to have to do is go to the Tinley Show, which happens to be this weekend. Oh, I can see Mara through the reflection. Hi, Mara. <laughs> um, I think we're going to go to the Tinley show this weekend, and that'll probably kick some inspiration for what we're going to put in. My right. hair is all disheveled. Your hair is all over the place. Okay, oh. we're at Tinley, and now we have the fun job of trying to figure out what to put in that cage. And I don't know still, we were talking about it on the way here, we still don't know what we're going to put in it. Yeah, Like, sure. snakes might escape, lizards, I... I don't know what we're gonna put in there. So we'll find let's look around. All right. How about how about these guys? That's too blue. Oh, there's a okay. How about any of these guys? That's too yellow. Now that one. That one's just right. We got green tree monitors for this enclosure. We got a pair of them, or one of them. Like we have a male for sure. This one is thought to be female, so we have to give her a little Probable bit more female. time. Probable female. Yep. So we're gonna keep an eye on them because uh, we want to make sure she is a female first. But yeah, we we have green tree monitors for this exhibit. Okay, we're back at the warehouse, and so now we get to deck out this enclosure for the pair of green tree monitors. And yep. that species is arboreal. They are tropical. They're kind of skittish, so they like leafy greens to like, like to hide, hide behind. They like a lot of foliage. So we rummaged through our greenhouse and found all of this. We found all that, and we found all this and that by my foot. It's all leftover stuff from our zoo build. Yeah. Along with some other things that have just accumulated over time, as happens when yeah, you're a reptile exactly. person. So yeah, we just foraged to find all the stuff we're going to put nice. in here. So we're going to put a bunch of branches in here and like foliage and stuff. But how are they going to like, if they don't have branches, like oh. if they're on like, how are they going to get up like the background? Climb the back. Yeah. We bought two boxes full of cork flats or cork oh. panels. So that's what those boxes are that I was standing next to? That's exactly what those oh, are for. Okay. Very observant, Ted. Good job. <laughs> nice. Um, Yay, gold star gold for me. Gold star for you. So we are going to take these tiles and wrap them all around the back. Just the back. Or just the back? I think just the back. Okay, that'll work. It would look funny if you're looking from this way and you're seeing like the cork. Yeah, that's So I think true. just the back. Well, shoot, I didn't need two boxes of this then. Well, we I can guess. use it for other stuff. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, so the whole back is going to be cork, and that's what we're going to do first. Perfect. All right, we have the ledges in, which our original idea was to cut the cork panel around each ledge, but then we're like, what if we just screw them through the panels? And that worked beautifully. So now we have nice ledges and a cork background. So now I get to do the my favorite part, which is actually decorating it. Nice, look at this. I've got cork and sticks and plants everywhere. It's kind of hard to see with the glare, but you'll get to see it better when the lights are on and it's like dark out here. But then we got to thinking this base. We want like four inches of like a bioactive substrate, but there is no lip here. There's like a half an inch lip maybe. So Ed cut pieces of acrylic. And these are gonna be in the front here, and that's gonna hold in our substrate so it doesn't come spilling out through the doors. But then we were also thinking, with how this was put together or how it's built, we're not sure if it's isopod proof. So 
Or moisture proof. Or moisture proof, yes. We don't want water to just soak in and then all that material expand. So Ed bought this mulch film and we're gonna line the bottom with it, but and that'll hold everything in. Uh, we'll just put, put dirt on top and you won't even see this, but it'll protect the wood. But I think first, first we have to put those on, right? Yep. Are we gonna silicone those in place? I think so. Okay. Okay, the acrylic's on, we have the base in place, and next is soil. So I brought, or we bought, uh, potting soil. I have shed skin, I have leaf litter, I have moss. I have almost all the ingredients for Snake Discovery Awesome Mix, actually, for this. like a North American forest, which is perfect because we're going to put a box turtle on the bottom when we have one surrendered to us because they get surrendered all the time. So we'll just wait till one comes in. And yes, we have some sad looking plants. They've been out of dirt for two days. At least. I don't know. We pulled them out of the mossy leaf tail gecko enclosure and we were going to throw them away unless we found a purpose for them. So we'll see if they live. They might not, but oh, you have the lights on. Yeah. Nice. UVB for some reason. So oh. I that out. Why isn't that turning up? Oh. Okay. We're going to figure out UVB. And while Ed's doing that, I'm gonna put in isopods. Oh, you got it. Nice. Oh yeah, it does hurt help when you turn yeah. it on. Isopods, so many isopods. We've got orange Dalmatian and orange mix in here. These are all scabers and they're gonna have a ball in this enclosure. Go free isopods. There they go. Ah, oh, so many of them. There's also a bunch of springtails in there too. So this will be both an isopod and springtail culture. You can see all the springtails rummaging around. Oh, and that isopod just ate dirt. Okay. And now it is time to add our beautiful green tree monitors. Now we have a friend, Cody, who was at Tinley. He helped us pick these out. And so we're pretty, we're really excited to have these. Never had greens. We've had blues. They're yep. in our zoo. But this will be our first time with green tree monitors. Are we, are we ready? I think so. Okay. Here we Here, go. I'm going to go on this side. Okay. Here's the mail. Oh, check it out, dude. This is your new home. And here comes the female. There we go. Oh, going to check out your cork tube? They're not as scurry as I thought they were going to be. Yeah, same here, actually. All right, let's give them some time and see how they like their new digs. to our warehouse. A pair of beautiful green tree monitors. They're still trying to figure everything out. I think they're still settling in, so oh, yeah. I'm excited to see how they utilize all the space. And after they've been quarantined, which by the way, we don't even have to quarantine them because they're the only reptiles in this building. They're yep. al already being Everything else is empty. Yep. So it's just products. So once they're done with quarantine, we are going to wait until we have a box turtle surrendered to our rescue. And then after it's quarantine, we've set up the bottom to be a box turtle habitat. And this way they can coexist and use different areas of the enclosure all together. And I'm really excited for it. We just have to set up a lamp or something. Yeah, a basket and down there. Yep. station or area for it. Yep. So we do have to add the electronics and then we can add a box turtle in the future. Thanks. So maybe we'll show the box turtle in a future video video or something. Maybe. We obviously can't do it right now because they have to be quarantined. Yep, exactly. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you Teresa and family for uh, giving us this amazing enclosure. We're excited to have been able to like give it some new life and new yep. inhabitants and we're so stoked to have our first reptiles at the warehouse. So thank you for watching. Thank you Patreon backers for your amazing support and what should we name them? Oh, we have to find like a, a good pairing name like mm. Jack and Jill or something.